Hello and good day everyone. Um, well, basically today I'm going to show you how you can run um, uh, electrochemical impedance uh, spectroscopy for uh, phloem or membrane sample. But basically we need to understand what is actually the purpose of uh, doing uh, EIS experiment for membrane or for phloem sample. Basically when people produce membrane or probably phloem, they want to understand uh, what will be the conductivity, okay? whether uh, the produced sample is basically conducting and uh, at the same time it also have uh, any electrical properties. So this uh, not limited to membrane or phloem, but you can also use the similar uh, techniques which I will explain to you after this in order for you to understand uh, the EIS behavior of uh, superconductor, uh, supercapacitor, eh, semiconductors, eh, field cells and whatsoever. So um, the basic is actually we want to see if there's any uh, electrical properties and at the same time uh, after we obtain the resistant charge transfer or probably uh, diffusion uh, values whatsoever from EIS, we can use this um, value in order to calculate conductivity or to do further discussion um, from it. So I hope after this um, you will understand and uh, the potential stat that we are using today is actually Gamry reference 600 and um, uh, this uh, potential stat is quite versatile and uh, we have tested uh, for various samples and uh, let's say that uh, you have a liquid sample, gel sample, or solid sample. Uh, the uh, EIS experiment can be done or can be worked. I will also show you the types of cell uh, that normally people use in order to uh, undergo uh, EIS experiment whenever the sample is actually in solid, uh, phloem, membrane, uh, or maybe in gel. So uh, stay with me and uh, hope you will enjoy the videos. Thank you. So basically for this um, experiment, um, I will use a phloem which have been uh, produced in our lab. So this is actually a polymer electrolyte sample. Okay, It has a, a fixed uh, thickness with a fixed dimension. And this is basically the types of cell that we going to use for EIS experiment. So you will see that it is actually made from uh, two stainless steel. Okay. So if you look inside of this cell, um, I will actually place the uh, membrane or the phloem inside, and then after that I will sandwich it together with another uh, stainless steel uh, electrode. So it actually assumes that when you have a sample, you will actually sandwich it together and one part will be a positive terminal and another part will be negative terminal or vice versa and let's say that if you have a um, powder sample that you want to uh, run for uh, EIS analysis uh, probably it sounds uh, impossible but it's actually possible what you need to do is you need to uh, make it into a pellet okay you can use um, FTAR uh, dye uh, or uh, mold in order for you to produce the pellet and then after you produce the pellet you can actually put in similar cell uh, to measure the EIS another thing uh, which is actually interesting in this case is that if you don't have any facilities eh, uh, or anything any tools or similar things for you to run the uh, EIS similar cell what you can do is you can actually find any uh, similar dimension of stainless steel you can actually uh, solder it with a wire at both ends and then you can actually sandwich the sample you can use a paper clip or whatsoever to clip so that there will be some um, uh, force eh, in order to attach uh, between the two electrodes and also the sample and this is actually our uh, potential step it is uh, Gamry reference 600 and uh, this is actually the uh, system that we are going to use. So first, probably what you need to do is you need to put the samples 
uh, inside the cell and after that you can actually connect it okay so I have actually put the film inside this um, cell and I'm going to um, sandwich it together with the other ends so make sure that when you actually uh, sandwich the cell together it is actually firm and uh, it is actually connected between uh, each others so otherwise uh, if the connection is not good then what you will uh, face is that uh, uh, some uh, probably uh, overloading and whatsoever okay. so just tie this um, or tighten this screws okay nice okay so for Gamry uh, it has plenty of uh, crocodile clips which I guess in my previous videos I have explained that all these are actually refers to a different uh, electrodes uh, functionalities so <clears throat> for solid state EIS you have to understand that one side will be working electrode the other side will be uh, a reference short circuit to counter or vice versa so the, the thing is we are using two electrode system in this case we are not going to use three electrode system so that is why uh, thing over here I will actually clip it with uh, working so you have um, green and blue and after that the other and I'll put uh, the counter together with the uh, counter sense. And finally the reference. So two electrodes at the other ends will be short circuit together. And this is actually a Faraday cage. I will use a Faraday cage in order to um, reduce uh, any disturbance or anything which uh, can influence the uh, results later on. So it's best if you can have your own Faraday cage set up. Okay, and this is actually the ground electrode. So the ground electrode will be ground at the uh, Faraday cage. right so just close this and next what will happen we will actually switch on the uh, uh, regulator the voltage regulator and we also will switch on the uh, potential step okay all right so next step is that we are going to go to the software Okay. maybe you will hear the sounds it means that there's a connection so the software that we use to run uh, the experiment is actually a Gamry framework okay. and if the connection is everything is okay you will see that it will change to green color okay All right so basically <coughs> A uh, few things that you need to consider before you run electrochemical impedance is that what would be the frequency range and also the AC uh, voltage value that you want to use uh, during the experiment. So these are the few parameters that you need to uh, I think, uh, know and at the same time the dimension or the area of the samples that you are using. Right. So to run the experiment, you can go first to experiment and then you can choose electrochemical impedance and then you can choose potential static impedance. Okay, so if you look over here, uh, there are several parameters uh, needed in order to run the experiment. For example, the frequency, initial frequency, final frequency, the AC voltage and also the area. Okay. So first thing that you need to do is probably you need to change the name of the sample. So let's say that this is actually a polyvinyl alcohol, PVA. 
uh, okay, with uh, lithium uh, perchlorate. Okay, alright. And then the date of today's experiment. So the initial frequency will be uh, probably over here. I set it to 1 megahertz. So 1 times 10 power of 6. Final frequency is 1. AC voltage, I think the best practice is you make it uh, in between 10 into 50. So 10 is a good number. And area, since the dimension of uh, our sample is actually 1 times 1. Eh? The film is actually cut uh, between 1 times 1 cm, so the area is actually equal to 1 and you have an initial delay of uh, 100 so after everything is ok then you can actually uh, press ok ok right and then it will start you will see that it will start with the open circuit delay for uh, 100 seconds before uh, the actual experiment of uh, uh, EIS will start. So we will wait until uh, 100 seconds before the experiment for EIS starts. Okay, so for after 100 seconds, the EIS measurement will start. So we'll see that it start to collecting data points. Okay. And uh, you will have a response of uh, border plot and also the capacitive loop uh, points and in between you will have something like uh, called as Lisa Zeus response it's like a oblong shape uh, curve so this will take some time and uh, I think after that you will finish the uh, experiment okay so this after the experiment ended you will see that um, the uh, the plot forms a pattern like this so what you can do next is that you can uh, press uh, F2 skip and then we can go to analysis and then uh, go to the uh, file name so it will actually open another software which is actually uh, ECAM analyst so this ECAM analyst actually will show you the border plot Nikki spot and also the experiment setup so this is actually the uh, Nik, uh, border plot that we obtain. You can actually press the Nikis plot. So you will see that with the Nikis plot, it shows um, something like this pattern. Mostly it is a diffusion. You wouldn't see much of um, a charge transfer uh, process because the charge transfer normally indicated by a semicircle. It's more or less like a, almost a linear uh, curve like that. So it means that um, the process is actually uh, controlled by the diffusion mass transfer okay right so what you should do next is in order to fit with the data uh, uh, in order to get the data you need to fit it with the uh, equivalent circuit equivalent electrochemical uh, electrical circuit so you can go to impedance and then choose fit a model okay so there's a various types of models that you can try on okay but uh, probably the one that we can use is uh, CPE with uh, diffusion for example and then uh, I think uh, these days Gamry comes with this auto fit function so you can just press auto fit in order to get the perfect fitting so let's say I press auto fit Okay, so you will see that, that it forms a line. So this line is actually the uh, uh, from the uh, circuit and the dotted line is actually from your experiment data. You can close this and it actually will open another tab that gives you the um, RU. So RU is basically the uh, uh, resistance of the solution. Okay, so why not? Alpha is the component of CPE. CPE is a constant phase element. So if you want to know more about constant phase element, you can actually watch my previous uh, videos. And another thing is actually give you the uh, Warburg resistance value and resistance charge transfer value. 
So why actually I feed it with uh, Warburg impedance or diffusion is because of this phenomenon. So you will see that um, it has diffusion. So diffusion is actually relates with the Warburg resistance and that is why in our uh, fitting circuit we need to consider Warburg as part of the uh, electrical component for the fitting. Right? So basically after you have obtained the uh, RCT values okay, so this is actually 5.7 times 10 power of 6 you can actually use it to calculate the uh, conductivity values okay so the conductivity values uh, can be calculated using a formula where conductivity of sigma is equals to the thickness over resistance multiplied with area so the resistance is actually the bulk resistance or the charge transfer resistance like in this case 5.7 times power of 6 you can multiply with the area which is actually equal to 1 okay and the thickness of the flame is actually divided with this value so you will get the conductivity values in the end i hope uh, this videos actually uh, will benefit to you and uh, for further discussion for any information you are pleased to drop uh, any uh, comments in this video Thank you very much and all the best for your experiment. Good luck.